Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about anti-bodybuilding or eight reasons we look like a wet sack of crap. Before I get into this topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. If you need coaching, I'd love to work with you. It's what I do full time. Please check out the link down below. All right. Anti-bodybuilding. It's like an anti-hero, except this anti-hero is stealing your gains. Back around 2005, 2006, 2007, I started a website called muscleandbrawn.com, and it competed as one of the top lifting forums on the internet. And it was a great time for lifting information. But back around then, a lot of information was entering the lifter's ear regarding all these different training styles and protocols. And about this time, lifters started picking up confusion. Powerlifting concepts started to be introduced and the average lifter started to pick up on things like box squats and wide stance squats. And we saw the rise of more strength-focused programs like Starting Strength and Strong Lifts and Bill Starr's programs. And while none of this stuff is inherently bad, a lot of this stuff took old school bodybuilding, took bodybuilding, not just old school bodybuilding, but if you look at how bodybuilders train, how pure bodybuilders train, a lot of this stuff took that type of training and completely trashed it. It completely replaced it. It didn't do that on purpose. But the average lifter became so confused with all these strength concepts that they started to graft them into bodybuilding training. And bodybuilding training basically lost a lot of its life. It lost a lot of the art that made it potent. What we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to reclaim your gains by setting aside anti-bodybuilding and by returning back to more a classical or typical bodybuilding style of training. So let's look at some of the slides here, anti-bodybuilding. Why we look like a wet sack of crap. It sounded funny, so I had to say it. No, not you specifically. I don't know you personally, and I don't know how you look. I simply want to explore why we've gotten so far away from the heart of bodybuilding that it no longer looks like the bodybuilding I know. So follow along. Here are eight reasons why we're not looking so bodybuilder-ish. Reason number one, our squats suck. This is a big one. Stop trying to squat like a power lifter. This cancer has invaded muscle building. Everyone is being programmed to overcomplicate the squats. They're defaulting to this combination of low bar and wide stance squat that really isn't super quad focused. We start chasing all these strength and powerlifting techniques when it comes to squat rather than feel. And I'm going to explain this in just a little bit. And in the process, we end up destroying a lot of our lower backs. It's not that a more narrow stance is always a golden way for everyone, but we have to refocus on what exactly we're trying to accomplish with the squat. Now, I have nothing against low bar, and I can tell you that when you're coaching the squat, basically you want to have a reasonable starting position for the individual, a reasonable starting point based on limb lengths and leverages, and then you kind of evolve things based on what that lifter is doing. It's not a good idea for the average lifter to start with low bar and wide stance because their lower back really isn't up to speed. There are some freaks out there that can get on that train right away. But for the average lifter, it's best to start high bar and just a reasonable squat stance. Focus on getting your basics down. Focus on your squat form. And then from there, we can make adjustments. Widen it a little bit based on your limb lengths. Maybe move down to low bar if that feels better for you. Again, it isn't that wide stance and low bar are inherently bad for all lifters. It's just that so many lifters coming to the squat feel like that's what they need to do to squat. The squat takes time to learn when it comes to form. So we're best off starting with just a more moderate shoulder width stance, starting on high bar, getting our form down, and starting to focus on working our quads. If you go super wide stance and low bar, it's going to put a lot of pressure on your lower back. 
it's not going to be the best for the starting lifter, especially when it comes to quad development because they're going to spend so much time hammering on their lower back that they're going to just learn to dislike squats. All right, reason number two, the minimalist mindset. Minimalism isn't the best way to train for hypertrophy. The whole minimalism movement sort of exploded during the whole strong lifts and Texas method and starting strength era. Lifters eager to build muscle began switching to programs like these that contain very few exercises. Now, set aside the debate whether they're pure muscle building programs. The fact of the matter is I lived through this era. I saw what was happening. Many, many lifters are like, hey, I'm going to try starting strength. I'm going to try strong lifts. I'm going to try the Texas method. These were guys that were trying to build muscle, and there's nothing wrong with trying these programs. But again, they became grafted into kind of the general culture of lifting. And you would see people that wanted to build muscle starting to spend a lot of time on these types of minimalist programs. This form of minimalism began to invade programming to the point where a lot of our programs, our muscle building programs, started to look more like strength building programs or more minimal type of programs. We started to see the cult of barbell consuming exercise variety to the point where our programs started to look like bare boned barbell graveyards. They began to look like a barbell and a few other lifts like pull-ups, maybe dips. Seeing machines and dumbbells worked into these programs was like spotting a unicorn. They just weren't a part of these types of programs or the mentality. To build muscle, we need to get back to attacking the body with a reasonable degree of exercise variety. We need to focus on what makes sense. And that means using all the tools in the toolbox, machines, dumbbells, cables, and barbells. Barbells are great movements. I love barbell exercises. I love deadlifts and squats, but we have to get beyond that. We have to return to using dumbbells. We have to return to using machines. We have to return to a little bit of exercise variety. Exercise variety is good for hypertrophy. Think about this. What is better, attacking your quads with one exercise like squats or attacking your quads on a weekly basis with things like the squat, the lunge, the leverage squat, the pendulum squat, the hack squat, the leg press, the Bulgarian split squat. Now, I'm not telling you to use all of them, but if you find three to four quality quad exercises and attack your quads with them on a weekly basis, it stands to reason that this is a much better way to build muscle, to approach muscle building. This is classic bodybuilding style, and we've completely gotten away from it. Reason number three, we become posterior chained. We've become chained to posterior movements. There's more to muscle building than just squats and deadlifts. Hey, I love these lifts, but our obsession with them has gotten a little bit overboard. Posterior chain movements take time to master for most individuals. You don't hear this on the internet because most people aren't coaching real humans in real life. This is, this is the truth, folks. Anybody that coaches people for a living like I do, and I'm not sitting on top of some high mountain, you know, trying to pretend like I'm better than somebody. But when you coach real people in real life, you know that the squat and the deadlift take time to master. They're not just something you put all of your energy in right as a, right from the beginning as a novice. You need to ease into these lifts. I'm not telling you not to do them, but when you see programming, for the novice or beginner that's hyper-focused on squats and deadlifts, this coach generally does not understand that it takes time for these lifters to, to get these movements down. And while they're learning form on these movements, they're not getting a lot of quality muscle development from them. So they need to be worked on in the back, like on the back burner. It's not that we don't do them, but placing so much of our focus as beginners and novices on squats and deadlifts is completely misguided. When you coach real humans, you begin to understand that we need to take time with these lifts. Sure, we can include them, but let's allow ourselves a little bit of freedom 
to learn them in the background while we rely on lifts that are going to help us build muscle now. All right, reason number four that we look like a wet sack of crap, we're scale locked. What does this mean? We are so obsessed with main gaining, gain taining, recomping. Everyone's become obsessed with trying to build muscle while remaining at some arbitrary scale weight. You really think you're going to pack on 20 pounds of muscle and keep the scale at the exact same number? Welcome to the Hogwarts School of Muscle Building. If you think, if you're tethered to a number on the scale, like 160, 170, 180, and you think you're just going to build 20 pounds of muscle while mysteriously losing 20 pounds of fat at the same time and keeping the scale at the same weight, that truly is the Hogwarts school of muscle building. Why are we tethering ourselves to arbitrary scale numbers? While the entire fitness industry will tell you in unison, focus on what you see in the mirror, not on the scale, somehow the muscle building world, the bodybuilding world, has become so obsessed with not allowing the scale to increase one pound while we fight to become mass monsters. Do you understand how backwards this is? This is a little bit dysfunctional. We want to remain lean, but the pushback against all the heavy fat bulks has become so strong that people are fearing gaining one pound on the scale. I'm here to tell you that if you want to build muscle, you need to do quality lean bulks. Head over to my website, superlivingtoday.com. Search bulk. I have a bulking PDF. You can also find it free here on Massive Iron YouTube. The way we approach bulking in the Massive Iron world is we do four, about four month bulks that involve 10 pounds of weight gain, six pound bulks that involve about 15 pounds of weight gain. We do a very slow and controlled bulk. And you never get so far away as far as weight gain that you couldn't do a quick cut and knock it back off. So a good place to start is like a 10-pound bulk, then a 10-pound cut, getting into the kind of that rhythm and pattern. When you're, you're feeling confident, you can do a 15-pound bulk, cut off 10 to 15 pounds. Here, you end up around the same scale weight, but you're leaning out and building muscle. You're staying in a bulk at least 10 months out of the year. You're not trying to do this ridiculous main gaining, gain taining, recomping, plant taining, all that kind of stuff where you're obsessed with never leaving a specific scale weight. All right, reason number five, pumpy volume lump. You've become a pumpy volume lump. What does this mean? Stop being a pumpy, pumpy volume gym lump. What do I mean? If you're obsessed with everything other than maximizing the next set that stands before you, you're probably on the wrong track. Now, let me explain. Things like muscle pumps, mind-muscle connection, obsessing about volume so you don't have to get stronger or progress, knowing everything about RPE, rate of perceived exertion, or reps in reserve, while your set quality remains subpar. Here's the nuance. I'm not against muscle pumps. I'm not against mind-muscle connection. I'm not against training volume, RPE or RIR, but they can be a distraction. And the pumpy volume lump will enter the gym with his toolbox full of distractions. I'm gonna seek the pump and I'm gonna add extra volume so I don't have to progress. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cal calculate my RPE and RIR and they're doing everything but making the sets count. They're doing everything but training hard. They're doing everything but focusing on that next set and crushing that next set. And if you don't focus on that next set and you're not obsessed with crushing sets, you have completely taken the heart out of bodybuilding and just destroyed the process. All these other things are tools and there's nothing wrong with them. But if you are not focused on the main thing that is hard training and crushing sets, you have become a pumpy volume lump. All right, reason number six, chase quality. We're no longer chasing quality. Stop chasing strength. All right, here we go. I can see the comments. Stop chasing strength and start chasing quality. What do I mean? What do I mean? Hey, aren't you a power builder, big, hairy, ugly dude? Aren't you a pretty strong guy? I'm a pretty strong guy. I mean, I'm not a, a top-level power lifter. I got pretty strong. 
but here's the nuance. Here's how I train. And I didn't train for strength, but I got strong. Here's how I did it. And here's how I did it in a bodybuilding context. It doesn't matter if you're adding reps to your bench press, if you have no control and you're just bouncing the bar off your chest. While strength standards for muscle building are good and can present a reasonable insight into how much muscle you should have based on your existing strength levels, we have gotten things a little bit backwards. We should be entering the gym with the sole purpose of maximizing sets. Plus ones for strength progress flow from this. You enter the gym trying to maximize a set, trying to train hard. It, trying to push a set as hard as you can safely. And from this, you get plus ones. From this, you get strength increases. Strength increases flow from hard training and effort. There, we don't just chase strength increases with random crazy form and chest bouncing bench presses. We need to control the weight. We need to focus on making every rep count because if we're making every rep count, we're making the set count. If we make the set count, we're maximizing the workouts. And if we're maximizing the workouts, we're maximizing the muscle building process. If you are not maximizing every rep, you are not bodybuilding. Reason number seven, WTF are you doing? How about we go back to training like a bodybuilder? We have this vast wide resource called the internet, and I'm being a little bit sarcastic here, where we can study how bodybuilders train and continue to train from the 1950s to 2024. We, we can look, we can study, we can figure it out. Yet, the average trainee in the average commercial gym is doing nothing that looks like typical, conventional, common sense bodybuilding training. Let me repeat that. You walk into a commercial gym and the average individual that's trying to build muscle is basically doing nothing that looks like classic, typical, conventional bodybuilding training. We are obsessed with science, yet we don't understand history and what the mass monsters around us are doing in the gym. We become so full of ourselves that we've lost the ability to see the bigger picture. Now, I'm not pushing you to do body part splits, and I'm not pushing you to train a certain way, but watch how bodybuilders train. Study how bodybuilders train. Look at their splits. We have access to this information. What the average lifter is doing in the gym looks nothing like what the professional bodybuilder is doing, natural or enhanced. Oh, I don't want to get in the PAD discussion because let's just set that stuff aside. What the average bodybuilder has been doing over the last 70 years looks nothing like what the average gym rat that has poor results is doing in the gym. And finally, you look like a wet sack of crap because you don't plan. Do you even plan, bro? Your favorite bodybuilder probably knows what he's eating for lunch. Newsflash, if you see someone with a lot of muscle mass, there is a good chance they're taking their nutrition and even their supplementation seriously. Now, I know that word is triggering, supplementation, but still the point stands. These lifters, these bodybuilders are pretty much taking everything seriously. You can certainly try to willy-nilly every aspect of your life and hope and pray that you build muscle despite a lack of focus and planning, but good luck. It's simply not going to happen. The reality is that the successful muscle builders generally take everything seriously. They are consumed by it. They take their sleep seriously. They plan their meals. They aren't just going out on whims, maybe occasionally, right? They're human beings. They're going to have a few drinks and have some cheesecake and have some fun unplanned meals. But in general, they're not just going around all willy-nilly. They're planning things out. If you aren't planning, if you don't have a structure, then you are just shooting yourself in the foot. So to recap, it is time to grow. Let's return bodybuilding to bodybuilding. We have all this information at our fingertips, yet trainees that are after muscle are being consumed and digested by influencers, pushing them to train in any way but a classical bodybuilding style. It's not their fault. These lifters, you guys are trying your best to understand what it takes to build muscle in a sea of, of confusion. 
You're being programmed to believe that RP matters more than hard training and that science matters more than art. Every day you wake up and the influencer of the day has some new bullshit for you, some new bullshit distraction, bullshit exercise distraction, distractions here, there, everywhere. Let's return bodybuilding to bodybuilding. And when it comes to these distracting influencers, try to watch less of their content. All right, guys, that's it. Again, if you need coaching, I'd love to help. Check out the link below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.